Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is November 24th, 2016, and this is our episode number 29. In our last episode, we took a look at a company called Valid Solo Soins. It's a payment gateway, uh, secure transaction company. And we were able to see that its debt over equity was within our acceptable range, which uh, made us not uh, discard the company as an investment possibility. So if you go here, uh, our uh, addition of debt divided by our uh, assessment of equity came out to 0 0.44, which is close to but not above 0 0.5, which would be the top uh, advisable ratio to pursue a company. So with that said, uh, today we can look at a, a Valid's PE10, which is something we did a few times so far, not very many times. So just to recapitulate, uh, the PE10 is the company's price divided by its earnings, averaged out over the past 10 years, okay? Ideally, this should be inflation adjusted. Uh, as a quick way to rule out companies that are clearly outside our desired range, I just add the earnings, average them out, and uh, not even consider inflation. Uh, if the company survives that, so we, we keep looking. Okay, so this is a kind of quick way to screen companies. Uh, without using a screener, so we at least we spend some time with each company because uh, yeah, just investing from screeners is simply not enough. You have to know the company you're investing in, right? So this is a start. Um, so let's get to work. Sorry for drinking water. I I really don't like when people like drink water when they're doing a lecture like can't you, can't you just talk for an hour without having a, a drink of water that's what i think but today i was like fixing my bicycle and i just came home uh so yeah i break that rule myself so here we have the dfp for 2015 so this time we scroll past the assets the liabilities and we go to the results table and here at uh, 3.11, we see the profits and losses, and it, it seems like they've had profits. So in 2015, 133, and uh, 2014, 110, 2013, 92. I'm just rounding up in this case. So 133, 110, 92. I have the table here. 133. 110 92 and please allow me to do a few things here so this will be just 3 t16 so i don't add earnings here because this is a quarterly however uh here i take annual and i just copy paste things here fix the years here Thank you for waiting. Great. We go back to valid. Let's go to past year. So we have 15, 14, 13. Let's go to 2012. Same thing. We go to the results table. Okay, for this one, we have two years worth. Sometimes they separate by controller and consolidated. Uh, this is, I admit it, it's a mystery to me why they do it like this. I still haven't stopped to look at why, you know. Uh, all I know is usually these numbers don't diverge very much. Uh, I know, I feel it does have to do with uh, other controlled companies uh, and such. 
uh, but I don't know the details. Anyway, so here you see it's the same number, so we're pretty safe. So they have two years worth here. So this is 103 and then 112. 103, 112. Impossible to not start taking uh, almost subconscious conclusions from these numbers <clears throat> after you've done this a few times. And I suppose you have to do way more times to completely ignore these conclusions or at least uh, wait, right? Look at the full picture a little bit before you draw conclusions, positive or negative. So here's 2010. I wish they had links here. So yes, profit losses. So here we have three years worth, but apparently 2008 they have nothing. Uh, okay, so 94 and then 73. 94 73 so let's take a look at the year of 2008 to see if they have it on that year here yeah, apparently they do have it here <clears throat> so 2008 and seven they have two years here so 54 and then 72 let's see if we can find 2006 and complete 10 years worth of profits and losses in this case only profits downloaded Okay, so we have 2006 here, so 67 million. Okay, so when I talk about uh, these uh, almost involuntary preliminary conclusions here, uh, well, first of all, you see a company that hasn't had a loss in 10 years. So typically this is a good thing. And with some variation, you see a steadily growing uh, profit, right? Uh, even through, well, we can see a little bit of um, difficult years, especially 2008, which was a terrible year uh, worldwide. So it's, uh, it's uh, expected that the results would go down. Uh, interestingly, in... Um, 2014 which was uh, I mean 2015 which was a miserable year here in Brazil they did uh, improve their profits uh, and another important thing here so we're edging towards the end of uh, 16 right and we're not looking at that number uh, this is not ideal like you wouldn't invest in a company without actually stopping to look at this but again, uh, we're just doing a, a first screening here. So we, we're taking a look at the long-term earnings, which is uh, more important than just this one year. And we'll take a look at the average now. We'll take a look at the market cap. And if it's way above or outside our, our desired range, uh, and this is usually above, right? Um, we we don't even need to to improve our our finesse here okay so let's do that oops something went wrong here okay so we have an average of 91 million profits without uh accounting for inflation okay uh, so here we let's try to find valid solo signs ticker okay this gives us the market cap okay 1.49 billion 
let me just uh, double check with Bloomberg. For whatever reason, I don't super trust the Google stock information. And it may be even more trustworthy than, than, than Bloomberg. Who knows? I certainly don't. And if you know, let me know. Uh, so here it gives us 1.553 versus uh, 1.49. So it's close enough. Doesn't really matter. So here we have uh, 15,000 million. 1 billion 500 million. And now we can even copy this uh, formula from here, which gives us the division, right? Okay, so 16.48. This is an interesting number, because if you haven't watched past episodes, uh, this uh, is worth mentioning. And for those of you who have, it's worth remembering. Uh, what's the ideal range here? Well, ideally the lower the better, right? Uh, all things equal. Or uh, if you have uh, the other uh, metrics uh, acceptable. You know, you'd be super well advised to buy a company at a, a PE 10 of 2. It's extremely rare. It's It happens. But that means your expected return is 50% a year. Like a magical... Uh, incredible return right so uh ideally the lower the better but not below zero for the pe 10 because that means the earnings are negative so that's a, a nose diving company so from zero to so like 10 is a more realistic number for a healthy company uh and at the same time very desirable so if you find a very healthy company selling at 10 10 times the earnings, that's great. Uh, and then it goes progressively worse, right? So if you see a company selling it 15 times, it's not terrible, okay? Especially if the company has uh, like six super solid, it's, it's fundamentals, and it has a strong brand, and it's uh, competition safe, uh, and its um, field is not challenged. And if you feel very uh, s certain that this company will be around in 10 years, so to speak, 15 is a possible number if the company is high quality, low debt, things like that, right? So here we have a number that's 16.48, and we did not account for inflation, okay? Uh, it, this company is not a company that looks outright like a total bargain. Like, let's go to it. Let's get it, you know. Uh, forget everything else. Uh, and that doesn't really happen. You know, don't do that. Uh, but it's interesting because uh, we can, uh, in our next episode, uh, inflation discount and f take a look at its PE 10 inflation adjusted. Okay, so this is not that fat pitch that you just want to take out right, uh, but it's a good opportunity for us to 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 do together uh, the inflation adjustment. So I'll see you in our next episode. If you haven't watched the past episodes, you're strongly uh, in, uh, you're heartily invited to. And thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.